What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube world? This is Chris, and this is my channel, Barn on 11970. Thanks for taking the time to check it out. All right, guys, this video that I'm about to make is going to show you why we need to continually research and not let things that are things that we take for granted be things that we don't research. And I'm going to use nothing more than our Constitution here in the United States Corporation to show you how they've gotten all of us to become slaves and why they have, let's just say, the method to their madness. And it will justify and explain how things make sense. Now, unfortunately, throughout history, there have been slaves of all races, all different types of people. It's not just one particular race that's been slaves. Now, I'm not saying any of them are right, and I'm not trying to trivialize from anyone. But we have to understand that even though, at least in this education system here, I don't know where how it is in the rest of the world, but here in the United States Corporation, they program us to believe only one specific race were slaves. Now, again, I'm not saying that's right. I'm not saying that anybody deserves this, but they try and make it so it's a divide and conquer. In other words, they're saying they hammer it here in our public schools here that only African Americans have been slaves. And that makes whites hate blacks, blacks hate whites. It's all about separation. I have no problem with somebody other than if they are a good person or not. To me, it doesn't matter somebody's race. But we have to keep it real. Throughout history, there have been slaves in all different races, colors, creeds, what have you. This is going to show that if you are part of this corporation, and again, I can only speak for my country. I don't know how it is in other countries. So if you feel this is similar, please leave comments below and let us know. Educate us all around how the world operates. But there is, and I'm going to use the Constitution to show how they use words to trick you. And they also use words that can justify what they do. Now, I'm going to read directly from the 13th Amendment. And if you have a constitution, I recommend you get it so you can see I'm reading it verbatim, word for word. 13th Amendment, Section 1. Neither slavery, now get this, nor involuntary servitude, except for uh, as a punishment of for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to its jurisdiction. And we don't have to worry about Section 2 because it doesn't have to, it doesn't really apply here. Now, let's break down what that says. What they're basically saying is, first, we all know, if you watch my videos, about how the United States is a corporation. Just that name is the corporation. And they say, any place subject to their jurisdiction. Jurisdiction means where they come into contact. Not physically, but it's basically every state in the Union. And I've made several videos about how if you're a citizen, how if you have a birth certificate, how if you've registered to vote, you have unknowingly subject yourself to their jurisdiction, which is the corporation of the United States that's located in the District of Columbia. So when they're talking about it shall exist within the United States, they're talking about the corporation that's located in the District of Columbia. And that's why they put the next phrase or the place subject to their jurisdiction. So that means the only way you could be part of that corporation if you don't live within that 10 to 20 square mile radius of the District of Columbia, which is a foreign country in this land, if you become a citizen, you have become subject to the jurisdiction of that corporation. So originally when, and you could look this up in the Act of 1871, when they created the uh, corporation known as the United States, which is different from America. America is the continent. That's why you have a North and a South America. You have the United States of America, which they're saying is the United States, which was created in 1871 and created a corporation located in the District of Columbia. The reason that they did that was, and I'm giving a little background here, the reason that they did that it was because of the Civil War and how much money was spent. Wars cost money. Now, most countries borrow money to finance that war. That's where the banks come in, and that's how they grab power. 
So when people say things like, well, why do people say banks run the world? Well, if you borrow money, you're borrowing it from a bank. If you owe that money, well, they're going to either get repaid or they're going to take property. So when civil war happened and they used the excuse of slavery, which I'm not saying is not part of it, but it's not the sole reason for the civil war, the uh, Lincoln actually had to devalue the currency, creating more debt, borrowing money from foreign banks, like from the Bank of England. And when it came due after the war to pay back their debts, they had two choices. They can either have the country go bankrupt, and you know what happens in bankruptcy, or they made a deal that said, if you give us just a small little piece of your land, a little 10 to 20 square mile radius called the District of Columbia, we're going to create a fictional corporation, a foreign country. We're going to name it the United States. We're going to have that name incorporated. And anybody within that 10 to 20 square mile radius will be part of that country. So if you think about the government at that time, they may think, well, that's no big deal. That's just 10 or 20 square miles of an entire country. Sure, we'll do that deal if you forgive us for our debt. But then they got sneaky and they used words. Now, our 41st Congress basically sold out this country and they basically got paid to look the other way. That's why you see politicians making so much money. They get bribed to either pass laws that are unjust to the people or to deny laws that would benefit the people. So what happened is once they agreed to say, okay, that'll stop our country from you know, going bankrupt, so they may have even thought they were doing good. Think of it from their perspective. Well, let's say you're part of the government at that time, and somebody comes along and says, well, you have two choices. You owe all this money from the Civil War, all the debts that you borrowed, and you can't pay it back, so either you can allow your country to go bankrupt, and who knows what will happen there. You may lose your sovereignty. It can be divided. Who knows? Or just give us a little piece of land, and anybody that lives on that little piece of land, they'll become part of our country. You'll think, wow, we're actually saving the entire country because we're giving this tiny little piece away. Now, what the banks did, because banks are very smart and they like to screw people over, they've done it throughout history, even if you're religious – you know, you see even that Jesus in the Bible, you know, the only time he gets violent is towards the money changers, a.k.a. the bankers. What they did was they created different amendments after that to be able to lie to people. And without people learning about it, they would do it through their silence. And in law, compliance can be uh, taken from silence. So if you don't disagree in law... They could say, well, because you didn't disagree, that means you could possibly agree. So when you become a citizen, when you get a certificate, not of live birth, but a birth certificate, you end up becoming property of that corporation, which means you become part of that jurisdiction, which means you don't have to live in that 10 to 20 square mile radius. You can live outside of it and become part of it. And what they did was slowly but surely they grabbed every state in the union and they all became part of a corporation now, I can bet you that the politicians that work in your area, at least the higher officials, like the senators, they know about this. They just don't tell you. That's why they talk about citizens when they refer to the people. They don't say the people. They always say the citizens because people and citizens in legal terminology, and if you want to look up legal terms, I suggest getting yourself a law book like this. You want the fifth edition or less. The, the older ones will give more information. The newer ones, they kind of silence it. doesn't mean those don't exist. They're just trying to make it more difficult for you. So as far as the slavery is concerned, they're talking about how it's the... I'm going to read this again. Neither slavery nor, get this part, involuntary servitude. Now what does that mean? They wrote that specifically for that reason. Involuntary servitude means that a government official cannot kidnap, kidnap somebody against their will and force them to do something. That is the legal definition according to the 13th Amendment, and I'll show it right here so you can read it for yourself. Just take your time to read it if you have to or pause it. That's the legal definition according to the Constitution of the Corporation of the United States of slavery, which means, because they worded it that way, that if you volunteer to serve, 
then you are not considered a slave. Now, how does that apply? Well, like I said, if you have a birth certificate, if you have a driver's license, if you've ever registered to vote, if you check a box that says, are you a U.S. citizen? Well, you are volunteering your servitude. Now, think about that if you've ever been pulled over. Like, let's say you went through a red light or you were speeding. And you didn't damage anyone. You didn't harm anybody. And you get pulled over. What is the cop really doing? Because he's not a peace officer. Peace officers are, like, for example, a sheriff who have the law of the land. Whether you know this or not, and I've learned this and confirmed it, that because of the whole Bundy Ranch, that sheriffs actually have more authority in this land than even the president because he works for a federal corporation, which is not part of America, the country. It's part of the United States, which is a corporation. So you need to get those two things separated. They've convinced you through schooling and through the fact that they know that people will not verify this stuff. People assume, and we take things for granted, but they make you assume that America and the United States are one and the same. They're not. That's like... Macy's the store and Macy's the man. Just because they have the same name does not mean they're the same entity. So if my name was Jack Smith and I created a business and I named it Jack Smith's and I incorporated the name Jack Smith, well, I would be Jack Smith, but there's also a corporation known as Jack Smith. Same name, different entities. So that's the difference between America and United States. United States is a registered corporate name located in the District of Columbia. So through our silence, because for this Constitution to take effect, it has to be through the consent of the governed. We the people are the ones that are allowing ourselves to be governed. And because we accept it and we don't dispute it, in law, that can be interpreted as you are agreeing through your silence. So that's how they trick you. So what's happening is, is we're going against their definition of slavery. We're not, they're not, they're, they may be lying to us. They may be com committing fraud, but people get away with fraud if you don't know you're being, you know, treated, you know, tricked. But they're getting us to not become involuntary servituting. They are making us volunteer through our ignorance and through our silence. So it no longer applies this quote-unquote protection of the 13th Amendment against slavery. Now here's another part. The next word in this, in this amendment say, except as a punishment for crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted. What does that mean? Well, what they're telling you is if you are in, convicted of a crime, and you are placed in prison, the 13th Amendment does not apply to you. In other words, they could make you involuntarily become a slave. That's why you see all of these corporate-owned police and prisons, because it's all part of the corporation, paying workers, what, 70 cents a day, $1.50 a week, and basically saying to them, well, you have two choices. We can put you in your cell 23 hours a day, seven days a week, with one hour of rest and relaxation in some other cage. Or you can get the privilege of working, and we'll pay you a little bit. So if you're a prisoner and you're stuck in your cage for 23 hours a day, working would seem like a good thing because it'll make you feel like, well, I'm being productive, and it's also getting me out of this cell but they're not getting paid anything that's fair value, especially when the minimum wage, I don't know what it is at this point, but let's just say, for argument's sake, that minimum wage is $8 an hour. They're not paying the prisoners $8 an hour to do the work, and some of the work they're doing would probably be, like, for example, a carpenter, they might make $20 an hour, $30 to $40 an hour. They're definitely not paying the prisoners that. They're paying them, what, $0.10, cents, $0.20, cents? 30 cents an hour, if that, or maybe 30, 40, 50 cents a day, slave labor. Is there any reason why you don't realize why there are so many laws that are created on a daily basis to make it more and more easily 
having the ability to get people to become imprisoned, incarcerated, and part of their around going around the system. But if you think about it, like I was saying earlier, let's say like a cop pulls you over. You've done you've gone through a red light or speeding, something where you didn't injure another party. They are basically contracting with you. And they are basically, without saying it, they're using fear and your ignorance to get you to volunteer your servitude. In other words, if they don't get an agreement from you, if you acknowledge the fact that they are trying to get you to involuntarily serve, then they can't get you. At least they can't get away with it. I mean, yeah, if they shoot you, if you have some idiot cop that shoots you, obviously there's nothing you can do about that. Now, I'm talking about in real law, they're trying to entrap you through your ignorance and through their fear and their ability to scare you, which is fear. So technically, if a cop pulls you over and you haven't wronged anyone, in other words, you went through a red light at 3 o'clock in the morning and there's no one around, you didn't hit anybody, you didn't hurt anyone, and they pull you over and say license and registration, it's technically them trying to get you to commit fraud to yourself. So when you hand them the license and registration, you you didn't involuntarily serve. You volunteered it. You know, just because somebody asks for something doesn't mean you have to give it. If you're walking down the street and some stranger comes up to you and says, Hi, can I have $1,000? Well, what would you normally say? Normally you'd say, no. You wouldn't just say, oh, you asked for 1000 I guess I better give it to you. See what I'm saying? So what they've done is they've mastered the ability to understand real law. Now, the average cop on the street is not going to know about this. They're thinking they're just doing their job. It's the people that are higher up that know the laws, know the definitions, and they write them certain ways. That's why I've done videos about actual court cases where they're actually talking about, um, let's say in Congress, they're having a hearing against some senator or some politician. And they say something like, have you ever lied to an, any American? And they say no. Well, let's say they did lie. And they, they are trying to say specific words to get them out of trouble. And that's what saves these politicians. Because if you know anything about legal definitions, when, when the person specifically asks, have you lied to any Americans? Well, they're talking about citizens. We're citizens because we have birth certificates, we registered the boat, we have driver's license. We're no longer considered Americans. In other words, when you become a citizen, you are now part of a corporation known as the United States, which is the corporation located in the Washington, D.C. area and is not the country of America. So you're basically a traitor. We all are until we learn how to get out of the system united altogether. So when they use trick words, so this way it looks like they're actually trying to really hammer this person down, but they know what they're doing. When they say the words, have you lied to any Americans? Well, he can say, no, I have not, because the people are not the people in legal definition terms, because there is a difference between a regular word and a legal definition. This is why they have, oh, wrong book. This is why they have law dictionaries. It's called legalese, which means the terms that you think are just regular English, and this is how they trap you, are actually different in this book. So if, the, for example, if they really want to hammer this person and they know he lied and they're trying to really get him in trouble or her in trouble, they would have said, have you ever lied to any citizens? Because then he cannot lie under oath, or if he does, he's committed perjury. So they use words to trick you. So technically what they're doing when they're pulling you over and you haven't done anything wrong, in other words, you may have broken a code or a statute, but you have not injured another party. So there was no crime committed. They're trying to get you to involuntarily, well, I mean to voluntarily serve, which means they are allowed to treat you like a slave. And that is why in the 13th amendment, they write it in a specific way. So if you don't know legal terminology, that is how they hurt you. Basically what they're doing is, even in the court system, they're inviting you in to play their game. They use fear and intimidation and the fact that the majority of people don't research this stuff to entrap people. So when you go to a court system, you're basically accepting their invitation, which means you're volunteering your servitude. And then it no longer applies. You're now a legal slave. 
And then, if they incarcerate you, now, under the amendment, they have the legal right, not the lawful right, because right, there's a difference between lawful and legal, but they have the right to treat you like a slave and create slave labor. So, is there not an incentive for government, the government, to create more and more crimes that get more and more people incarcerated when they can get the labor for pennies on the dollar and they profit from you? It's time we stop being ignorant. It's time we all awaken to these truths. It's time to understand legal definitions. And this is why people get so mad at when politicians get caught red-handed doing something and they don't get punished. Because, first of all, they all work together. If you ever look at the history of the majority of the major players in the political field, you'll notice they have something in common. They've either worked for Goldman Sachs or some other financial con industry before they became a governor, a president, a senator, or vice versa. You'll notice that when they retire from being a senator or a governor, they get their job working in the financial district. This is not coincidence. This is a reward for keeping your mouth shut. And these are the people that we put our trust in. So I know slavery can be a delicate issue. They do that on purpose. It's all about divide and conquer. If you can get one race to hate another race and they fight amongst themselves, there is no unity. And that's why you see even on YouTube, there are people that their job, whether they do it for fun or they do it for money, their job is to make people divided. And yes, yesterday... One of them got me for a little while, but as you can see, that lasted for what, a couple of hours? And I go back on track because the priorities for me are trying to educate the people, not the citizens, even though you are a citizen. Legally definition of citizen means you are part of that jurisdiction of that little tiny area that the 41st Congress in 1871 thought they were just giving away to save the country. But little did they know or maybe they did know and looked the other way, I don't know, but it eventually engulfed the entire country. We're all part of it. Now again, I don't know how they did it in other countries, but I know that other countries have been incorporated. So if you live outside the United States Corporation, you may want to check and see where what's happening in your area of your world. Because I can guarantee it's pretty much going to be the same. So what is this video about? This video is about getting people to understand what our politicians did to us. You'll never hear this in school. Why? Because it's publicly funded by the government. You will never hear this in the media. Why? Because of F FCC regulations. In other words, the government has control of that. You'll only see it in the social networks here. You'll only see it with people that are not connected to the system. But what they will do is hire people to try and trash people like myself and others to make them seem less credible. Now, you may not like me. You may not understand the things I talk about. But there is no denying what the legal definitions of something in this document called the, de the Constitution is. So if somebody wants to attack me, they're only going to attack me personally. They are not going to attack this information. And that's how they get people to be distracted. So if you want to focus on petty things, then you're missing the point of how they have trapped us and enslaved us for decades, going soon to be on centuries. How long do we allow these people to continually entrap us and enslave us? It's our ignorance. We do it to ourselves. Yes, they're committing fraud. Yes, they are lying. Yes, it's wrong, but they're still doing it. Once you know these things, you have the power to change it. It's like a magician. When you're a kid and you see a magician and they do all these tricks, you're amazed. It's like, wow, where did that rabbit come from? Or how did they saw that lady in half? Once you know the trick, it no longer amazes you. So this information is showing that the lady split in half is actually two people. They're not really cutting her, cutting her in half. What are you going to do about it? So I'm not saying to become a criminal. I'm not saying to tell a cop to go F off. Because some cops, they have such an ego trip, they will abuse you. Unfortunately, they don't know this information either. And they don't realize that they've sworn, and this is the same for the military, 
And again, I'm not saying that they're bad. They're just lied to like we are. That a cop, a military person, any government person, they will swear an oath to protect the Constitution of the United States. That means they're swearing to protect that little square mile area of Washington, D.C., which is a registered corporate name, and that's it. So they think they're protecting the country when they go overseas, the military, and doing what they do. All they're doing is, is gaining resources for the corporate banks so they could profit off of our demise and using you as a foot soldier to do their dirty work so they don't have to get their hands bloody. And the same thing with police. They are no longer peace officers. They're enforcers. They are enforcing the laws of a government corporate system known as the United States. And they don't know this. And they swore an oath to protect the Constitution of the United States Corporation. So they think they're doing good. They think they're doing their job. They think they're protecting the streets. And I have family that are cops. And I cannot talk to them about this because they refuse to hear it. And if people refuse to hear the truth, then they got you. They got us, and they will ultimately destroy this country. Even more. And that's why it takes decades to accomplish the goals. Because if you do a little bit at a time, people never notice. And that's why they distract you with reality TV shows, with celebrity controversies, with football games, with baseball games, paying them lots of salaries, talking about it a lot, because they want you distracted. They want you to not care. They want you to think, ah, well, life is so short, I'm just going to drink my life away. That's fine. That's a choice. The beautiful thing about free will is you have the choice to do whatever you want, including doing nothing and including doing the wrong thing. But if that's the case, if you now know the stuff for the first time and you research it, because I'm not telling you to take my word for it. I'm telling you, get your own constitution. Get your own Black's Law Dictionary, fifth edition or less. Check it yourself. And if you can see that I am correct in what I say, then if you continue to do it, you give up your right to complain. And you definitely give up your right to hate somebody like me for ruining your fantasy. Because after all, it's just a dream. And if you want to live in a dream world, then is it any wonder why you're asleep? Because when you're asleep, you don't go anywhere. And what I'm trying to do is awaken a sleeping person to let them know they're in a burning building. Now, they may wake up and say, wow, I was having the best dream in the world. I was dreaming about 20 women all around me and partying with a bunch of people, and I had millions of dollars. Why did you wake me from that dream? And they may not notice the flames around them, and they'll focus their anger on me because I woke them up from their dream. Well, you know what? I'm trying to save their life. And if they don't appreciate it, it doesn't change the fact of what my intentions were. So if you don't appreciate it, that just means that you're asleep. That just means that you don't believe in this stuff. Well, belief is irrelevant. You don't have to believe in something for it to be true. And I've said this in several hundred videos, that even for centuries, the churches told people that the earth was flat. That if you f traveled too far, you would fall off the side and go into oblivion. Or you'd get attacked by some sea monster before you got there. They also said that the earth was the center of the universe, and they also said that the sun revolved around the earth. So when somebody like Galileo came along and said, no, that's not true, the earth is round, and no, that's not true, the earth revolves around the sun, and the sun, at the time they thought the sun was the center of, of well, at least our solar system, but not of the universe, and they laughed at him. They attacked him. So it's just like people like me, the people who don't understand will ridicule it because they want to be part of an emotional gang. They want people by their side. And that's why I'm pretty much alone in this. And I'll get some people that will actually use personal attacks against me. And if I say one thing wrong, I can have 99% of the stuff right. But if I say one thing wrong, they won't focus on any of the good stuff. They'll just hit the hammer, hammer down that one little spot. Because it's to get you to stop listening to this information. To make you think I'm some crazy person. Because, like, for example, yesterday I got mad that somebody took advantage of the fact that I made a video about my father's death and used it as an excuse to make a video. Because they knew what they were doing. The guy's not an idiot. He may be a lowlife, but he's not an idiot. And for him, I saw the comments that people were leaving, and it shows. I didn't tell anybody to hate it. I just told them to watch it. 
And every time he said the same thing, he doesn't understand it. You don't think that's smart on his behalf? Not the right kind of smart. Not the good kind of smart. There are smart people that build bombs. Is that really smart? Smart to be able to build it, but not very wise. So this information, what you do with it is up to you. If you want to just ignore it, that is your call. If you want to verify it, that is your safety. So the next time a cop pulls you over, you might stop and think, wait, should I be voluntarily serving this person and uh, basically abolishing what little rights I have? That's up to you. So I'm going to leave this video with that. This is long enough. Um, if you appreciate this stuff, I am asking you as a Barnum warrior or somebody that's never been here before who appreciates this information, I want you to get it out. I want you to share it. If you can't share it, make your own. I don't care about that. The idea is to favor this, thumb it up, because the more people that thumb it up, the more people will see it on your channels and get that information out. And if you have a Facebook or a Twitter account or any of these social networks, take this video or your own or someone else's and share it. Get this information out because knowledge is power and it's about time we start taking responsibility instead of allowing other people and waiting for other people to save you because then it's not going to happen. That's why you'll see every superhero movie pretty much is one lone person who's making a difference while the other people sit there waiting to be rescued. That's a fantasy. If you want to live a fantasy, then stay asleep. But don't complain that you're not going anywhere in life. That's your choice. So if you want to hate me for being the messenger because it's the popular thing to do, you're not helping this country get any better. So the, I, I make a challenge to any of the people who hate me for what I do. Instead of just attacking me and my message or attacking other people and their messages, do better. How about that one? Do better. And I'll applaud you. I won't hate you. Thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day, and don't forget to have your trolls spayed or neutered. Peace.